Hey there, how's it going? Welcome to Loop Learnings. This is video number four. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create relationships in Microsoft Access. We are making school management system. If you are first time coming to my channel, welcome to Loop Learnings. And if you're returning, welcome back. Either the way, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please make sure that you hit subscribe and hit the bell icon as well. So you get notification whenever I upload a new video. If you haven't watched the previous three videos of this series, I would strongly recommend that you do that so you understand what we are creating. Right, let's get a jump right jump. Uh, let's get jump into creating the relationship. So we have created the tables, the database schema. And the next thing we are going to do is we are going to link these tables with each other. Now, if you remember while creating the table or database, I did explain what is foreign key, what is primary key and both primary and foreign key are going to be used in creating the relationships. So that's why I am I'm recommending that you should and you must watch the second and third part of this series as well. So you, you know what is primary key and secondary key. If you are already aware of it, great, awesome, keep watching. All right. So we are going to create a relationship. So to do that, we will go to the ribbon in database tools and we'll go to the relationships. Okay. Now, if you are using the latest version of Microsoft Access, you will have uh, the tables appeared on the right side in the pane as well. Now, for example, if you get this kind of screen, do uh, not worry. You just right click anywhere and you say show tables. OK, so you get the tables uh, overview here. OK, so what I like to do, I like to, you know, take these tables. Either you can double click. OK, you get the table into the canvas. All right, like I'm doing right now. So I'm just uh, changing the height of these tables so we can have more tables in the canvas. So let's get into admissions. Let's get that table and now. So admission ID is a primary key in admissions table, but anywhere else, this admission ID will become a foreign key. Now, for example, here, student id you see here student id here is a secondary key but in students table this id would be primary key so we are going to create that relationship in just a moment likewise with the academic year as well so academic year i believe it's a foreign key and academic year which resides in the academic year table is a primary key so every time you are creating relationships you must make sure that you're creating relationship with the right uh, uh, foreign key. Also, you must make sure that you have the same data type in both foreign key and the primary key. If you have a different data type, let's say in academic year, you have number data type in academic year here in this table, you have short text data type, for example, you're going to get error. So it's very important that you pay attention to this. Okay. So I'm going to create a relationship to create a relationship. It's quite simple. You select the field, you drag and you drop where you want. So I'm dropping here on the academic year, which is the foreign key in admissions table. The moment I leave the mouse, we will get a pop up like this. And just to confirm that you are creating the right relationship, you must look at that uh, whether everything is correct here. All the tables are correct and the fields are correct. The other thing I would like you to see here is if you will pay attention is relation type one to many. There are different relation types. So one to many is the most common that are used, but there are other two one to one and many to many relationship as well. Now those I, I'll be very honest. I have not used many to many relationship and I have not used one to one as well so i mostly use one to many what does that mean actually this relationship actually this relationship means that a one academic year can be used in many other tables okay you can we can use that one record in many other tables and many other records so that's what it means okay and whenever we are creating relationship, it's a best practice that we enforce the referential integrity. What will happen by clicking here? Now, by clicking here, uh, we will make sure that we are asking access that to check that data exists 
before it proceed for the data entry for example if the academic year 2022 does not exist in academic year table then if a user will type or choose 2022 from the drop down or type in here in admissions table it will give an error it will say it will apply this enforce referential integrity and it will say look i'm trying to search 2022 which you have chosen or which you are uh, which you have inputted in uh, the uh, referential table but i can't find 2022 so therefore i'm going to throw an error you're getting a point so it's same like if there is no patient record created then you can't really create a prescription right in terms of school management system i don't know why i have given that example by the way but it was example in school management system if the student is not created you cannot create admission you cannot create fee or other things as well so it's similar like that okay the other thing i would like to do is i would like to cascade the updated related fields so for example if uh, i change the information in the primary table for a for a primary key that will be automatically changed and reflected wherever that information is used so it will get updated okay i believe that's what it means if i'm wrong please do let me know in the comments below again i'm not an expert but this is what i have learned and i'm sharing with you okay simple as that and i just create click on create relationship if everything is okay if the data types are fine everything is okay then it will create a relationship otherwise it will throw an error so let's click on create and it seems that everything is okay you see this little symbol i don't know whether you can see it or not so it says one to many relationship is created so i have explained you how to create relationship i have explained everything and now i'm going to speed up okay that's the purpose was explaining so you understand so if i double click here if you want to change the relationship you double click here and you can add it even you can change the uh, tables and the fields that you want to so basically you can do the editing of the relationships that you have created all right cool now student id is uh, another thing that we have to link with the student table so let's get the students table right here okay and i'm going to create relationships here and here and now it's it's just the repetition of the same steps which i have demonstrated so you do that with every single field so admission id relationship created academic year created now class so let's get uh, classes table here and let's link these two tables as well class id class id here oh here we go next one is section so i believe we have sections table as well so let's create the section uh, okay here we go section id and section here all right cool that is done now relationship for this table is done Let, let's move on to the next table which is student id so uh, student id let's see what relationships we have to create so student id student name roll number date of birth okay nothing in here so at the moment so we'll just uh, leave it like this and class id we link it that to the class id now i it, it might happen that you know i will I will forget to create a relationship or I might skip it. So that's why, because there are so many tables, so many relationships that you have to create. So that's why what I like to do generally is I like to move from the top and then complete the entire list. So admissions, we already have uh, academic year, academic month. We already have classes. We already have uh, class scheduling. Let's take this table and for sure here we will have the session id teacher id session date no 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 that's one so session id and teacher id so which means we need to have two more tables to fetch to be fetched so sessions t okay that's the table so we'll link uh, session id primary key to session id secondary key here in this table we'll create that class id uh, we'll come back to this table later on um then we have teacher id so that means we have to get employees table so we get the employee id that links to the teacher id okay that's fine anything else we need to have no nothing now let's uh, link this table and uh, this table requires class id so we'll just drag and drop i hope that you have gotten the idea how we are going to section id there is section id okay i have not uh, mixing things up if you spot any mistake please do let me know as i said 
sometimes you know if you have lots of tables this gets messy so that's why i'm being a little bit careful here all right okay now let's move on to employee type so probably i'll just scroll uh, towards my right and i will get the employee type and here we should have employee type whoa nothing oh here we go i was i was uh there was a shocker a little bit <laughs> okay exam category that's the next table next table okay let's choose that we don't have any related table okay in here we have student id for the scheduling okay exam type let's get the exam type table as well and let's link that to exam type okay i hope that you are learning i hope that you are focusing first of all i hope that you are watching <laughs> so i should say first i hope that you are watching and if you are watching and i hope you are paying attention and if you are paying attention i hope that you will practice it later on so this we are kind of done okay now let's move on to exam uh, category id let's link that here okay class id yeah we have class table so uh you know i'll just shrink it a little bit class id where is class come on here we go uh, i have to bring that table here okay so class id and class id all right is it getting bored boring uh video i hope it's not section id do we have a section no we don't have section we have subject so let's bring uh, the subject table here we go subjects table so we have subjects id that is done as well so this table is also done now let's uh, it to let's see if anything that we require here nothing okay so exam type and fee balance let's get this as well so this has to be linked with student id okay and anything else anything else nothing okay we have to have collection fee collection here we go so collection id is linked with this and fee collection table also have a relationship with the student and it has relationship with fiscal year and it has relationship with fiscal month Okay, so that, that's how you create. Now next, do we have anything else? Uh, nothing, it seems. Okay, nothing. All relationships are done. Yeah, student collection. This is also done. Fee structure. Let's have a fee structure. Let me pull these tables here a little bit. We can also reduce the height of these tables. So, you know, we get a little bit of space. So fee structure, let's pull this table here and, and let's remove this. Okay, we get a little bit of space here. Okay, so structure ID, we have a class ID uh, here. Let's drag and drop onto the class. We have fee type. So let's get the fee type table as well. Fee type ID to fee type ID. Okay, fee blah, blah, blah. Okay, done this table nothing else needs uh, okay that is also done all right subject is subject have we linked the subject or not let's see subject ID if it is linked uh, see we did not that's that's what that's what you know I am always curious and I always wonder because with all these tables, when things get crazy, we skip or we miss things and then later on we realize, oh, section T. By the way, the, even if you skip or uh, section is already there, oh, I'm choosing it. Even if you are, if you forgot and if you by mistake uh, skipped something, it's okay. You can come back. You will realize later on. You just have to create a relationship. Simple as that. We have sessions table as well we have student table as well subject table as well it seems like we have covered all the tables now as i said there might be something that i might have 
skip not intentionally but because things are crazy here uh, onto my canvas so i might have forgotten anything if anything you notice to spot it please do let me know in the comments below that would be really good otherwise you know i wanted to demonstrate this and i hope that you have learned something and um, if you have please do let me know in the comments below and uh, smash the like button if you like this video and that's it i hope that you will come back later please make sure that you practice whatever you learn all right thanks very much i will see you in the next one